Hello everyone and welcome to this brief presentation showing you how to use Microsoft PowerPoint to design your posters in. When we did the poster presentation session um, you would have heard me talking about the particular size for your poster and for most conferences they require, require something called A0. So I just want to show you how to use Microsoft PowerPoint to design this. If you're a bit of, a bit of a whiz kid with technology then you may be using Adobe packages or publisher or something else. I'm just going to show you using PowerPoint. So first of all you need to start off by choosing a new presentation. I've gone for a blank one and uh, the invisible boxes on here, the text boxes, I'm just going to click on those and delete them because I just don't like working with those in the background. Now what you need to do is to get your poster into the right shape and size. Most conferences ask for portrait uh, uh, orientation. So if you click on the insert tab, sorry I beg your pardon, if you click on the design tab and then go to slide size, custom slide size and choose portrait. Okay. Now the paper that you need is or the size that you need is A0. So when you click on this down arrow here you'll notice that a different paper sizes but A0 isn't listed so just click on the one at the bottom that says custom and then you have to manually type in the size of A0 so if you go to Google and just ask what size is A0 you'll find the size um, I know it because I've got it written down in front of me and it's um, 84.1 centimeters wide and 118.9 centimeters in height and I'll click OK and I'm just choosing maximize and there so that's the size of the poster. Uh, when you go to print this out either in Fry Building or Mansion or Stockwell Street it usually costs around about four pounds but if you had just done that in the ordinary uh, default slide size setting then when you try printing it out at A0, it just drags the image right across the page and it just doesn't work properly at all. So you need to start off by doing this before you go any further. Okay, and I'll just show you a few little tips on how to, uh, how to design it. So you may want to use some of the preset backgrounds. There are different types of uh, uh, um, slides you can use here. Or various types of color schemes. You can do that or you can make up your own. If you want to make up your own, click on Format Background and I'm just going to choose Gradient. And look, it's given me the colour blue, but I could change that. And it's Gradient. It's lighter at the top, darker at the bottom. Play around with all these different images. Remember, something I said in the presentation is you want to aim for that wow factor. You want to draw people in. It's great if it's aesthetically pleasing, if it looks good. But also it's important that you must follow the guidelines of the particular conference. So some of them will allow you to use images. Some say they want more text than images. All those different rules, you must follow those just as if you're following the rules for your own academic assignments. So what I'm going to do here, I'll just leave it blue at a minute and I'll go to the insert tab. And on there I'm just going to choose pictures. I've got one folder open here and I know the university logo is somewhere down the bottom. Okay, yeah, great. Okay, so there's the university logo. Now to download the good um, uh, high definition version of that, when you sign into the university portal, just type in the word branding and it shows you the, the, uh, the rules and regulations for the, the new university logo and you can download it from there in three different colour sets. Uh, this one here is the blue on white, there's a white on a see-through black ground, uh, background and black on a white background. Okay. Move that to wherever you want it across your screen and the same goes for any other images you do. Now I'm just going to resize this to show you always use these corner buttons because when you're doing that it's making the uh, the length and the height move in proportion to what it should be. If I had just clicked on the bottom arrow for example and dragged it that way you can see what happens. Um, and when you're using a logo of a particular organization they might have really strict rules with what you can and can't do with it. So I'm going to click on this 
and you can notice you can give different types of backgrounds okay again just follow the rules that sometimes you're not allowed to do things like this but if I just click on that one just to show you what's going to happen there's a bit of a, a dark edge to it all right so that's how you can play around with images giving them different types of uh, feel and look okay right when it comes to text again if you go into the insert and choose this text menu you might want to just type in a free amount of text I'm just typing gobbledygook here but you can see it's font size 18 but that's far too small to show up so actually I need to make it much much bigger okay even at 96 it's far too small so let me just try and make it a little bit bigger I should have started it bigger to start with I can't even see that there you go okay right and with your text boxes you can move them around put them wherever you want to or if you wanted to give a different color background to them double click and you might go to shape outline so you might want to put a, um, a particular outline around it uh, or shape fill and you can even go for things like this like gradient or texture okay again um, make sure that it all looks good and that you're following the guidelines of what you're meant to do. So some conferences, you'll be expected to do particular uh, sections. So it could be an introduction to the poster, an introduction, a rationale, your reasons why you've chosen it, maybe a review of the literature, um, a discussion of findings, conclusions, that type of thing. So you might just want to do all of that in one big text box, or you may be doing them in separate ones and putting uh, individual headings above each one. Okay, so there's that. Let me show you another good thing with this now. If you go back into insert and on text, and if you go to word art, it's got some predefined images. So I'm just going to click on that one. And look, you can do different types of backgrounds on them. So I'm going to change it to that. But again, the font size is far too small, and that's 54. So let me go to 96 again. And I'll just type some gobbledygook in there. But it's just put it in the same color as the box so I need to highlight it and change the color again you might want to put a shadow on it or italicize something or underline it all right and move that to wherever you want it now if that's your heading you may want your university logo a bit smaller and you may want your heading much larger so let me type in font size 200 there you go okay and move that to wherever you want it remember uh, you need to put your name on there as well and especially when you're working in uh, organizations the health service for example you may want to put the university logo on because you're a student at such and such a place and equally you're working somewhere and you put on your name your job type uh, job title and your study title so it's student at or undergraduate or postgraduate student you can put that on there as well and it's always good to put your email address your university email address because you never know who's going to see this poster and somebody may want to contact you about it and you never know where that's going to lead so always put your contact details on there some other little tips um, when you go into pictures I've got a nice one here that's the coat of arms of the Royal Borough of Greenwich I'm just using this as an example so whenever you put in a picture if you double click it as I showed you earlier you can do different types of borders on it okay different types of settings for the borders but also you might want to go to this color palette and choose something different okay or you can go to this one for artistic effects and make an image look very very different there are lots of things you can do to play around with it okay so whatever type of photo you're putting in now remember what I mentioned about copyright issues it could be that you're downloading something from the internet and if it says on there that the copyright is owned by somebody and you want to show this at a conference you really need to get copyright clearance and for most people that's all you need to do is just email the copyright holder tell them you're designing a poster 
for a health conference, for example, tell them it's not for profit, you're not getting paid for doing it, um, and please may you have permission to use their image. And more often than not, people will be really glad that you've asked them and they'll send you permission. Keep that, that's your evidence for copyright, okay? And then at the bottom of this image, you need to put in another little text box. And it can be really small print, but at least it's in there. So you put in the text box, copyright, owned by whoever it is, and then you can say used with permission. Okay? Um, if if you can't get the copyright permission, or if you're being asked to pay uh, loads of money for it, £150, for example, for, for, for some photographs, if you see that photograph outside in, in a public space, say, for example, it's a big poster um, in the street as you're passing by, take a photograph of it. If you're taking a photograph, especially if you show some of the scenery around it, so it's, it's, it's obvious that this has come from a photograph in the street and not downloaded from the internet, in that case, you own that photograph. So you can use it and you don't have to apply for copyright permission. You only do that if you're downloading it from a site where it says there's a copyright attached to it. Okay? Um, final two things for me to show you then. So it's not just text, but you may want to put in um, some statistics. So if you're using uh, numbers about something or other, then you may want to put in charts, different types of images that show how you're using uh, figures. And again, that can be quite eye-catching as well. Instead of just putting loads and loads of text, saying you know, 30% said this, 40% said that, 50% said something else, then you can actually show it through visual images. Okay? And another good thing on there is something called um, smart art. So especially when you're reading about models or theories and you can picture this, you can conceptualize it, then look at that old saying about a picture speaks a thousand words. So if you're reading stuff, especially if it's complex uh, theories that you're thinking of, for example, if you can then in, uh, envisage this and demonstrate it as an image, that might get the message across really well. So with all of you, especially doing nursing and midwifery, look how you are encouraged to be reflective practitioners. And you may say the model of reflection you're using is rather cyclic. So let me just choose this one. Okay. I'm going to delete some of this background stuff. There you go. So again, I'm going to resize the whole thing to make it bigger. Move that around. Okay. Now, when you double click the box, you might want to choose different shapes or formats to it. All right. Make sure that it's still readable, though. You don't want to try and go too trendy with this, that, that it looks lovely, but nobody can read it. All right, so be careful about that. But also you might want to change the colors. If you click each box individually, so you have to click it anyway to add the text in, but if you click each box individually, you can change the colors one by one. You don't have to use this pre-formatted stuff. Okay, I'll delete that. So I've shown you how to insert pictures, um, smart art and charts. And another good thing, you might want to put in different shapes. So say, for example, some form of speech bubble. So there, when you click in to put a speech bubble in, and the little yellow dot on the bottom, if you click and hold that, you can move that around. All right? So if, if you're trying to put in uh, some text in here, now you can just type text into there, or again, double-click it, and you can go for different, different colours, different shapes. Um, Okay, text fill, you might want to go for gradient again. Yeah, you can do different types of images. All right, so I think I've covered all the main things now. So it's A0 for your paper size. Check out the orientation and always follow the rules of whichever organisation you're hoping to show a poster at because the conferences might have different regulations for each one. All right, and good luck with this. Remember, if you are accepted to show a poster at a conference, you put that on your CV because it's a dissemination, just like writing an article, for example. So cite the conference, say where it is, and that's where you put it. All right, take care and every good luck. Bye-bye.